Mary Lou, Diana, Christiana. Glad you guys could join me today. You cut your dahlias yesterday? See, that's what I did, Diana. I said I was going to do this, and I went to, I was reorganizing my craft room, and I'm like, I know I have floral wire. Um, and then I got thinking maybe it was in a box that I lost in the flood. So I just had a few pieces. <clears throat> I've got some that's supposed to be here today. Good morning, Irma. All right, guys, we have a new calendar. Today is February the 1st. I don't know where the time has gone. Um, and uh, it is Black History Month. So if you're celebrating that, uh, you can share your projects in the group and let us see those. And, of course, we have Valentine's Day and President's Day this month. I do not, hi, Marianne, I do not make... Um, projects for every single holiday like President's Day and all of that. Um, I will do Saint, some small St. Patrick's Day one or two projects, things like that. I don't focus on the smaller holidays. So if you guys want something for those holidays, you have to let me know. Okay. Um, occasionally I'll make a Memorial Day card, something like that, but I don't I don't go big on those like I have done several Valentine's projects. I just, I go with the most populars. But if you ever have a holiday that you would like me to do something on, please just ask me. I'm happy to do so. All right. And you will find the new calendar in the groups in the featured pin post. It is there. Today is Blue Star Mother's Day. I haven't heard of that. What is that, uh, Christiana? Maybe I've heard of it and forgot it. Your son's birthday. Good morning, Louise. I have to... I have to look that one up, Christiana. I know that the blue star would have to some uh oh, mothers of active duty. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Now I should know that. <laughs> I should have known that. Why didn't I know that? I used to go to the um what do you call it? The Legion. I had a lot of friends that went to the Legion. I used to go up there all the time and take stuff. So, let's see. Oh, yeah, we have Groundhog Day, too. See, I didn't do a project for that either. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for spring, but it's bright and sunny here, too. You missed some chat. You can catch up. You can scroll back and catch up. So this week, tomorrow we are going to do the orchid, I think. I think we're going to do the orchid tomorrow night. Friday we are doing Louise's gnome shaker card that she did. We're, that's what we're doing on Friday. And then we will do the peony on Tuesday the 7th. And I haven't, I think we're going to do some kind of a daisy or something on the 9th. And then that will wrap up our felt flowers. And um, then you should have a good bouquet for Valentine's. It's 22 in Ohio. It was in the 80s here yesterday. Whew, I couldn't do 22. So that wraps that up. Um, if you have questions on the calendar, just let me know. And again, if you have projects that you want me to do for any of these holidays that I don't list, guys, 
you um, please reach out. Let me know you want me to do something. I'm happy to change up anything. The current sales, still 30% off of vinyl and paper, um, $50 off the Easy Press 3, and uh, don't forget to check out your Cricut Access exclusives. Please shop those links down below, guys, in the description of the video. If you do not click on that particular link, I will not earn a commission, and I greatly appreciate your support of my small business by doing that and supporting the channel, the group, and the websites. Um, let's see. Yeah, my um, great-grandmother was 90, I can't remember, 93 or 97 when she passed away. Um, but dahlias, that was her thing. She had a, her yard was just full of them. Love, love, loved it. The current giveaway. Um, they are changing Cricut. I can't, I'm under a non-disclosure agreement, Christiana. I can't discuss the roadmap. Um, but they're always changing, right? Um, so things change and it is what it is. So, um. I can't discuss anything because I'm under an NDA, but when I know and I'm allowed to tell, I can tell you guys, okay? Possibly. I can just say possibly on that. That's, just, that's all I can say at this time. <laughs> so... You are up to 2 a.m. trying to do projects, right? Guys, don't forget, please, 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 please get in your projects for this drawing, the shopping spree. Um, we have until, I forgot, I see, I've even forgotten what day I'm drawing on. I have to go and look at all this stuff up. I've got so much running through my brain that I forget my own dates and times. But it's on there. I think we're drawing on the 13th. Something like that, somewhere around there. You can read it in the uh, description. It's in the group featured post, and it's also on the site, craftingwithapril.co. All the rules and everything, all the legals, everything is there. Um, so that is that. Make sure that you are getting in your projects for the Community Create Challenge. It ends on February the 7th. It ends before your uh, Be Mine drawing. But you can use your projects from the Community Create Challenge in the Be Mine as long as it's not the same project that you posted for the Community Create Challenge in the group. It has to be a different project, even from another group that you did or entered into. I will take it. All right. So make sure that you're getting all of that. And if you're having questions on the Community Create Challenge and you want to be sure that it is absolutely entered in correctly, simply tag me. I will put it into my collection and check it for you. I will make sure that it opens. It doesn't have any uploads. The tags are there and your hashtag on the post is there and your link is on the post is there and that you use the image. I will double check everything for you. You just have to tag me. Birchwood sticks will work for the dahlias. You could probably get away with that, Diana. Um, however, you're not going to be able to bend your leaves, but I mean, it should work. You can make the, I mean, because you could actually put the flower on the end of a pencil. You're going to need wire for your leaves um, for to be able to give them some shape and bend them, okay? But the flower itself, you could put on the end of a pencil if you want to. That's that's no big deal. Okay? Can you enter more than once? Um, on the Community Create Challenge, Christiana, yes, 27 times. There's 27 groups. Um, it's all in the um, video and in the featured post I did in the groups. There are 27 groups that you can enter into, but there will be 28 winners because out of 
after all the 27 are picked, they're going to pick another winner from everybody that participated in the challenge from Design Space. They're going to choose one from Design Space. So even if you don't enter into a yours into a group, if you make one and, and put it in the do it correctly, um, you have a chance of winning that Design Space draw. So the Be Mine, you can only... Um, you can you can enter as many projects as you want on that Christiana, but you can only um, enter into raffle rafflecopter so many times. Now there are extra entries, and you can earn points for doing whatever it says per day. Okay, so take a look because basically I set up those giveaways, Christiana, and then. I don't pay attention to whatever the requirements were in Rafflecopter. Sometimes some of them are mandatory and some are optional where you can earn extra points like liking the Facebook page or making a tweet each day. Usually if I do a tweet, you can do it daily and earn points daily um, for that. Um, but the initial one that is mandatory, you can only do once. Good questions, guys. So let us let me pop over here. This is your supporter file for the day, guys. And I'm just going to, I'm not going to put one together. I'm just going to cover how I did it really quick. And then we're going to get on to making our Dahlia, which is here. And I told you guys I would be changing it up. This is the same one. Now you see the Magnolia and the Dahlia on the canvas. I just unhid it. And the other photo is still there. So I told you I would be changing it up so that you guys could see it each day, but it is the exact same file, and it is on my profile. It's shared publicly if you want that, okay? So this one is not shared publicly. It is a supporter file. All right, so let's pop over. Okay. Super easy, simple card. You're simply going to cut it, and I cut this panel with the butterflies on it, intricate cut only. Okay, you want to cut this on intricate. Um, otherwise, you could run into issues with it. This I did, this is a piece. I used the Cricut foil poster board for my back panel so that my butterflies pop through with that foil behind them. And I did this and debossed it. If you have an explorer and you don't have a maker, you can just do this on a uh, shimmery gray paper with some markers or pens or do it whatever colors that you want to use on your card. You don't even have to use grays and silvers like I did. Um, whatever colors you choose and you can use pens. I left it as pen in the, um, in the file for you guys but you can go in and change it to deboss. And then on the inside it says, Welcome to the Neighborhood. It's a little hello card. I used some enamel dots on there just to pop them up, and then I used a, a bow from close to my heart um, on there. Super easy. I did pop this up with foam dots. All I did here was just pick these wings up after I put it together, so make sure you're not putting any glue behind your butterfly wings. Okay? Super fun and easy dimensional card. I also did an envelope in there. This envelope was free, but then I used the butterfly on it, so you have to have access or either purchase the butterfly or go and get the free envelope and size it. And this one is self-closing. Okay, so you don't need any adhesives on there. You don't even have to have glue to glue these sides if you don't want to. If you just want to fold the card in it, you can do that and it will hold it closed. And you're simply just going to lift up those butterfly wings. I did not put scores on them. If you want to add scores to it, you can, but they're pretty easy to lift. And then you're just going to thread them through Oops. the slit and then open it up and it will seal your envelope and give it a little dimension. This is not a mailing envelope. It has a little decor on the front with a little butterfly in between the flowers. Um, 
this is one that you would hand to somebody or put inside a package that you're mailing. You would not let this get machined. Okay. All right. Super easy and simple, simple, simple layout. But it has a lot of bang for the buck. All right. So that is the supporter file for today. Make it up. Change the colors up. Show me what you got. <laughs> Okay, the dahlias. A couple of things. This is the inexpensive Joann's. Love the look of it. Came out really well. Looks great. This is the Cricut. Also love the look of it and the tightness of it. Um, kind of looks like it's still blooming. And there's a reason for that. And we'll get into that here in just a little bit. Which one's easier to work with? This one. This one was easier to work with for this floral. And I'm just going to tell you it's because it was flexible and pliable. This one was a little bit more difficult to work with, but it I love the crispness of it. So it's going to depend on the look you want and the level of difficulty. If you're brand new to making flowers, um, hi Brenda, if you're brand new to making flowers and stems, I'm going to suggest that you work with this one for practice before you go to this one. This material is a premium material, so it's going to be a little bit more difficult. It's stiff, and actually, in my opinion, it's a little too stiff for this floral, but it will work. Okay, you're going to get just that little bit, and you can see the difference in the looks you get between your felts. Two totally, it looks like two totally different flowers, even though it's the same file and they're exactly the same size. Okay, so let's put one together. I've already started doing some of these, guys, <clears throat> just so that I could save a little bit of time with you guys working on these but you're going to start you're going to stack everything up by size okay you're going to start from the smallest and work your way to the largest the smaller ones with this Cricut even with the other the smaller ones were hard to work with okay um or I'm not going to say hard to work with the the getting it started was a little difficult I'll say that um, they all have a hole down the center of them, okay, uh, and I use a toothpick. I used to have a glue pot, and I couldn't locate it, probably lost that too. A glue pot would be great for this flower, and I'm just going to get a little bit of glue right on the end of this toothpick, and try not to string it. And right here on the edge, you're going to put some glue and you're going to fold those two together and pinch that. Okay, that part's really easy. Now we're going to get into the difficulties. All right, you want to hold it until it cools completely or it's just going to pop apart on you. I'm using low temp glue and I'm not trimming the flower, I'm just trimming the glue that's squished out. Okay, once it's set, then you're going to bring this one in and do the same thing. So, a little more glue, and I'm going to go down the side of that petal, and then I'm going to bring this petal in evenly. Or as evenly as you can and you're going to hold that one in until it sets this is creating the center bud and I will say you can see that that slit in the bottom is starting to open up when you're working with the Joann's felt that hole gets really big really fast so you will need to glue in your stem on that one. Or you may not have to glue it in on this one. And again, we're going to 
glue you're just gluing all of these sides together. And then the last one. And I got a glue here and it's it's chasing me. There we go. If I can get it open here before my glue sets. There we go. Yay, I got it. First try. <laughs> so it's going to end up looking almost like a square. Okay. Super easy. Just tiny and hard to hard to, to grasp. Okay. Now we need a stem, and I don't know. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna guesstimate how tall I want this one. I take this stem, and this one's a little different than the other day where we did a hook. I'm just gonna take it, and be. You're gonna judge this by the hole, and that's gonna help um, as to how far down you want to go and how big you want that loop. Okay. You need a bigger loop just move further down and you're going to roll that over and create a circle all right and then you're going to take that circle and you're going to bend it over so that it's like this okay making that stem once you have that and run that stem right down through there. And again, if your loop is not big enough to keep it from pulling through, a little glue goes a long way. And I'm just going to straighten up my stem here. I got, I got a little crooked in there. There we go. So now I've got that on there. I like to glue mine just, just to give it up some hold. So I'm just going to take a little drip of glue Instead of doing the inside and messing up the top of my flower, I'm going to go from underneath and put a little glue because that's going to be hidden anyway. You're not going to see it. Okay. And I'm just going to let that glue, if I can get it to focus, just going to let that glue sit and dry on there. Okay. Set it to the side. Now you're going to start with your next smallest one. And let me just show you guys how we're creating these. And then I, I like to put mine on as I go. That way I don't have to, at the end, sort out which one's bigger than the other one. I'm going to say these are really, these get really tight. You don't have to do this with the less expensive felt, but with this one, it's really tight and bunched up. And there's no way that that's going to sit down on the inside of it unless you do some clipping. And all I did was go in about an eighth of an inch, maybe a quarter of an inch, and snip in between each one of these petals. Otherwise, it's too tight. Because this is stiff felt, if, if your felt is stiff, you're going to need to do this. And just clip in between each one of the petals just to give it a little bit so it will relax. Okay, when you're doing this next step. So once you have that done, you're going to take a little bit of, I'm going to get a cleaner toothpick. That one's all gunked up because I've been working with it. You're going to get just a tiny bit of glue. You'll need more for the bigger leaves than you do for the smaller ones, I'll just say that. And you'll you can judge it as you're working with it. And I use the toothpick and just hold it there, generally, and then just pinch that leaf and pull the toothpick out. And that's what you're doing. You're just going to pinch it. Okay? And then you're going to move to the next one. You want to let it cool before you let go of it, or it's just going to pop back apart with the stiff felt. The Joann's felt didn't do that. It held pretty good. You could move pretty quick with it. Um, but with the stiffer felts, 
you're going to have to hold it till it cools or it's just going to separate. So I'm just going to get a little dot of glue, lay it on there, and we're going to pinch it, pull the toothpick out. Um, I'm going just right, right about here where my finger, let me see if I can point it. I'm putting my glue right about here on these petals and it doesn't matter what size. I'm putting my dot of glue right about here. Let's see. Let me show you on this one. Where the end of this toothpick is, that's right where I'm putting my glue. Right there at the end of the toothpick. Okay? And it does help if you pinch your leaves all the way around before you get started on this stiff felt just to give them a to take and get them to relax a little bit it will help if you walk around and do that okay i've gotten used to it so it's you don't have to but it will help okay so clip it pinch it and it's going to work for you a little bit better and I will try to speed through this as fast as I can. I was trying to get some done this morning before we got started. Good morning, Mama Bear. So again, just tiny bits of glue. Lay it on there and pinch it, pull that out. This flower will not work for paper. It might work for crepe. My crepe is not here yet. Um, I know it won't work. Well, it might work for the stiff, uh, heavy crepe, but I believe it might work better for the extra fine. And that's because it's not an individual petal. One like this, doing it from paper, needs to be individual petal so that you can roll it into that cone shape. And you can't really do that with this type. Each one of these petals would need to be individual to get that cone shape with paper. In case you guys were wondering. Yes, they are very pretty flowers. And again, uh, we have two different ones here, Mama Bear. One on the right, this one here, is um, the Joann's felt, just the basic felt. And then this one is Cricut. And I can see that one of my petals came apart right there. I'll have to fix it. It's really, really stiff for this flower. Okay, so once you've done all of those and you have them ready, and that one came apart because I didn't hold it. I'm gonna hold it. Once we have those, now stay. You're going to, this is dried, so I'm just going to take the next layer and we're going to put it on the stem and we're going to bring that up around this bud. Okay, I'll clean all my glue hairs and all that stuff off after. So once you have that on there, that one goes on. Then you're going to take the next size. And again, I clip this one to make it relax so that I can get it opened up. Otherwise, it's not going to go around that, okay? And then the next. You do not need to glue them between the layers. And I'm not gonna clip one of these so that you guys can see how tight it gets.
See, I did clip this one and it's already getting tight. It does, see, it doesn't want to go up around it. It wants to bunch up. So I'm going to take it off. And I'm going to clip it just a little bit deeper between the petals. See if that's maybe on this side too. You don't have to clip deeper on, on all of them, just enough to get it to open up so that you can get it to go up against the other one. Again, if you're using the Joann's felt or a more flexible felt, you don't have to do this. But with the stiffer felt, you're going to have to clip it so that it gets up on that base. Okay. Um, da, da, da. yeah, I wanted, I, I know that it may take a little time to put this whole flower together on a live, but I wanted you guys to see all of the complications and options that you have, um, because not every felt is going to be the same and it's not all going to be perfect. Um, so you have to, you have to know what to do when you're running into an issue with it. This one I clipped. I'm going to do the next one. I'm not going to clip that one and let you guys see the difference. Let me hit that keyboard before it's over. You can, um, it's acrylic. It's it's an acrylic. It might take it. It might take the infusible ink, but if it gets wet, it may not hold, um, and it may not be as vibrant. Um, but I think you can do it on acrylic. I, I I saw somewhere where somebody used infusible ink on acrylic. I haven't tried it. I haven't tested it. Usually, if I do something like that or see something. I don't take their word for it until I've tested it myself. Um, so I'm not going to say, yes, it will work, Mama Bear. I'm just going to say test it um, because I don't recommend anything I don't test. Okay. Um, but I did see somebody say they put it on acrylic, infusible ink on acrylic, and but I didn't. I didn't find it again to follow up to see if it passed the wash test, but of course you wouldn't be washing these, so it could work. Isn't acrylic a form of polyester? Yes, yeah, some, some felt is polyester. Okay, so I clip that one. Maybe enough. I hope enough that it will come in on this one. See how it wants to wrinkle up at the bottom instead of lying flat? And that's okay. It's not going to be seen. And then you can work around twist it around how you want. <clears throat> but again, you're just not going to get the fullness. I still love this look. I love the crispness, but I also like the fullness of this one. So it's going to depend on the look you like. Okay, this one is not clipped. And we're going to just pinch, pinch and pull.
And the, the larger you get, the easier it becomes to work with it. For me, anyway. I'm not good with small miniature. I guess it takes practice, maybe. After you do a few, it gets easier. My first one was all fumbly. My my vocal Pitsky. I don't know if you guys heard her. Yeah, if it's soft, you're going to get that look like Joanne's. If it's um, a Walmart felt, if it's soft, you're going to get the Joanne's felt look. If it's stiff, you're going to get your Cricut felt look. Doesn't matter on brand, it's the how pliable it is. <clears throat> A Pitsky. She's part pit, part husky. More husky than pit. She's very vocal. But you can see how tight the center of this is. There's no way that that's going to sit flat and flush. Okay? It's just not going to happen. So I can show you what it looks like. Trying to get that on there. You're just going to get your leaves all folded up. And it's going to be, it's just not going to go on there well. I'm just going to say it's not going to go on there well. So I'm just going to come in here and clip down to right where it has like a flat bottom. I'm going to clip down to that about every other one or every two or three. You don't have to do them all. Just in, you can feel it relax in your hand, and you'll know. Once it's relaxed, then, then it's going to work a little bit better. And then you can spin it around till you get that fullness. And then the next one I'll put here to fill in that fullness. Let's see. Now that's much better, right? Again, don't do that with this one or it's not going to go on well. This one has a, it, it's more pliable and it will lay flat, but where this one does not. And again, don't do this to the pliable, only to the stiff. The other one you'll find super, super easy. Again, if you've not done any stems, start with your pliable felt and make one with it because any mistakes you make are going to be hidden with this one. Mistakes you make with this one aren't going to hide. You're not going to be able to hide them. The, he came to see where that bark came from. That was her. She was starting to talk. She starts. That's how she starts out. And then it's. She just carries on from there. She's trying to tell her daddy she's ready to go to the park. <clears throat> I've tried all kinds of felt. <clears throat> Excuse me. And again, it's going to depend on how pliable it is. Not really. <clears throat> It's thickness or it's it's pile, but more of it's again. It, is it stiff? Is it pliable? Um, stiff felts are going to give you a totally different look than the pliable felts. Um, the pile on a felt because you can get a thicker pile than this cricket felt where it's 
thicker um, and it's stiff too. So every felt is going to give you a different look. Every different kind of felt is going to give you a different look on every flower you do. But I have not made this particular flower Irma with Michael's felt, if that's what you're asking me. <clears throat> I have not. And that one, that clip did good. It, it's relaxed a little, but I know it's not enough. I don't like to clip it too much until after I've got everything pinched. And then go back in and clip it wherever I feel like it needs to be relaxed at. There we go. We're just going to slide it in and work it around where we like it. There we go. Just work it around. Two more, guys. Yeah, it it doesn't. I think it just says cricket felt. It doesn't say anything. What about on the website? Does it say anything there? Maybe in the more section. I didn't clip. I didn't clip. I can tell I didn't clip. You couldn't see it on the website either? Okay. <laughs> right, Marianne? Cricut felt just cut so good on on the machines um, without, without needing a rotary. And that's another thing in case I forgot to mention. If you're using the Joanne felt, Remember I told you it didn't cut well and we changed our rotary blade. Cut like a dream with a new blade. So it was my blade, not the felt. Um, but you need your rotary blade for this. Or you have to bond it, which you don't want to do. That's just going to defeat the purpose. You would need the stiffer felt to cut on your Explore machines without a rotary. That one came apart on me. Maybe it'll stick this time. That one's chasing me. I don't know how I ended up with two. I thought I threw one away. And if yours isn't holding together after it cools, you're not using enough glue or you're not letting it cool. That one came apart too, so I may not be letting it cool before I let go. Yeah, the felt, you have to watch it. It's not on sale right now. I looked at that last night. But it goes on sale frequently. So you can grab it. Maybe it'll be on sale next week. We're still doing flowers next week, too. So if you want to grab some felt from Cricut, get it to you before next week. Look at all this glue hairs out of my way with my leaky glue gun.
It could, Mama Bear, but it's going to stiffen up. And if you could pull it back off after it cuts, that would be great. All right. And I, I know that that cupping is just too much. Not going to sit well. I'm just going to. We want some relaxation there. And if you feel like yours isn't full enough, guys, you can always cut and add more flower petals. You don't have to stop just because that's what they put in the... And we have folded too much, but that's okay. Things are like that in nature too, right? Last one. The leaves are really easy. If you use your rotary blade, you must use cutting. If you are using your rotary blade, you must use a pink mat. It is denser material so that your rotary blade does not cut through it. If you use a purple, a green, or a blue mat, it is not as dense as the pink mat and it can cut through the mat, especially if you have a new rotary blade. So make sure that you are not using your rotary on any, and it's going to help your rotary blade too. You don't want the gunk. Um, I don't know if you guys notice, like when you scrape, use your scrapers and you scrape the paper bits off of your mat, how they get gunky, and I don't know if mine's gunky enough or not. But sometimes scraping the paper bits off, all of this will get gunky and sticky. I've got a little bit on there. Um, that is from scraping your mats, and it picks up some of the adhesive off the mats, and it makes it sticky. Um, that's why your tools get sticky, um, even though you're not using them with glue. If you're using them around your mats and picking stuff up like your spatula, it will get sticky. Your blade, your rotary blade can pick up that stick as well if it cuts into the mats and you don't want that adhesive on the that blade it's going to damage your blade eventually and you don't want to try to clean that blade because it will cut you that rotary blade will cut you okay be very careful yeah you can clean your tools with alcohol on um, plastics be very careful using alcohol on that um, like the wheels on your machine, the, the gray wheels or black wheels, whatever color yours are, where it pulls the mat in, you never want to put alcohol on those. It's a drying, alcohol is a drying agent, so be careful what you use it on. Um, like I have some sticky on my machine right now. I will use alcohol to get that off of there but not into the my machine parts. But you don't want to try to clean that rotary blade, guys, you will cut yourself. It's extremely sharp. Even if it's not cutting your material, it's extremely sharp. A lint roller is a very good way to clean your mats or a baby wipe. Non-alcohol baby wipe. Do not restick your mats. That's that will gunk up your machine. And it can be considered unintended use should it something happen in your machine and you have been doing that. And that will void your warranty. Get that relaxed. There we go. Last one. I may need to cut over here too. I see.
I like that. Okay, I like where that's at. I'm holding it. I'm going to hold it, hold it, hold it. If you like it where it's at, if not, adjust. If you like everything, then you want to get this piece. Okay, and you're just going to place it on the stem. And then we're going to take and put some glue on the base of the flower. You don't want to put it on the green part. You want to put it on the base of the flower down to it. Okay, and that's what's going to hold that in. Yeah, I. this is the thing, Christiana, mats. Here's the thing, especially green. And I use the green mats simply because I like them. Um, I occasionally use blue mats, but my go-to is the green mat. And um, if you are an Access subscriber and you use the group code, you can get 30 green mats, and they are... They are sometimes under under four dollars, sometimes under three dollars a mat. So I would I would make sure that I got them when they were on sale. And I'm sorry, my 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 stand with this glue gun is walking backwards. I'll bring you guys back. I don't want to make anybody dizzy. Just shifting the camera. So now we have the flower part done. We're going to work on our leaves. And I'm going to start with this one. This one is very tricky. Um, you might want to cut an extra and work with it. But you're going to take this piece, just like this, and you're going to run a bead of glue from one end to the other. And don't get it too heavy, but you don't want it too light either. And you're going to lay that in and fold it over and then run your fingernail right down it. You want enough glue that it wraps the entire See, mine didn't, I didn't get enough glue on the end, and you can still see my wire, okay? It's tricky. It's tricky, tricky, tricky. Let me get a little bit of glue. You don't want that glue to come up onto the top. If it does, you're going to have a mess. Like, I got the glue, it squished out on the top right there. You want it to seal up that wire so it's not shown, but you don't want the glue to come. Let me bend that out. You don't want the glue to come through. You don't want to see the wire. You don't want to see the glue, if that makes any sense. Okay. And once you open it back up and you bend it, but we're not going to bend it right now. I got a little squish out right there, but it's good. Okay. So when I bend it, it's going to look good. I'll use my glue eraser and try to get some of that off. Can always glue a ladybug on there. Mary Lou got ladybugs. I could get any ladybugs or bees. I couldn't find them. You can always glue yourself a bug on there and hide your glue mistake. <laughs> so that's what I'll do with mine. Super easy and simple. Then you're going to take this piece same thing, you're going to run a bead of glue right in the middle, just a, just a drop, and bring it down just a little bit and pinch that together. And then when we open it back up, you don't see any glue or the wire. Okay, that's easier to do than this one is. You're going to basically do the same thing with this one. Get two, two pieces here. You're just going to run that bead of glue right down the center 
not too heavy, not too light. You're going to have to play with it a little bit and figure out how your glue gun works for you. Place it in. Fold it over and then just run your fingernail or your bone folder, anything that you have right down the side. You can even use your pliers. Just run right down in there and seal it up. Then you're just going to open, bend it back. Okay. Last one. Yes, purple mats when I do engraving, just like Marianne. Um, yeah, Marianne, I use I use a blue mat when I'm cutting. Um, I use a blue mat when I'm cutting things like uh, vellum because the the stick on I, I missed that whole thing there. Um, the stick on the on the blue mat is a different type of adhesive. I don't know if you guys have ever noticed it, but if you use it with your cardstock and you pull your cardstock off the mat, especially if it's a new blue mat, the back of your cardstock is sticky. So I like to use it for vellum because it kind of helps my vellum stick down to whatever I'm sticking it to without having to use a bunch of adhesive that might show. I still need practice with using that hot glue on these, the way they did it. I'm not too sure that I don't like the backside better, but do it either way you want. It's your flower. You can do what you want. Okay. I'm going to unplug this so it will stop leaking everywhere. Well, we did do all of this in less than an hour. Wow. Because I did talk about other stuff and cards and stuff before we got here. And then you're going to do your tape. Again, It. I'm. this is the way I'm doing mine. They didn't do this. They did it after. They did or didn't do this part of the stem, I should say, but I'm going to do mine because I have dark green and light green because I don't have my light green stuff. And I like to have a little something for my, this one is really hard to get up in there too. Um, I like to have something for my stems to stick to. My leaves. It makes it easier to wrap if you can get a little piece of this going. Okay, if you want to be that way, we'll start down here. I'm trying to get up to the to the head of it. It doesn't want to give me any room to work. Maybe I don't stretched it too much. Not enough stick. There we go. All right. And remember, as you work this, as you're stretching it, your sticky will come up. I'm just having a really hard time getting that to start. There we go. I think I got it now. It's being really difficult. It's a heavy head. There we go. So get it 
get it going and then tear it off. Just did part of my stem, a couple of inches. And then you're going to wrap just part of, I'm you can wrap the whole thing here if you want to. I just want enough for it to help me stick up here. And I'm just, in case you guys are wondering, I'm just holding it like this. And I, my hand's in pain, too, so that's why I'm fumbly. But I'm just holding my tape and spinning and stretching with this. This finger is stretching. This finger, this finger's holding the tape and guiding it. This finger is stretching it. And then this hand is turning the stem, okay? All right, and then you're just going to place, oops, I forgot one, didn't I? And see, this one you can't get up in there. You can if you want to do it that way, but I just, I just didn't, my fingers aren't working. Still having my hand issue. In, just so you guys can see. Hold. Use this to stretch. I did use this finger because I can't really use my ring finger like I want to right now. Uh, my carpal tunnel has me. So place your leaves about where you want them. Go ahead and fold those out. So if you want them side by side, wherever you, wherever it is that you feel like you want them. I'm going to do mine right there. I like that. And then I'm going to grab this one. I think I'm going to put it on this side. I'm going to bend that out. I'm going to open those up. Put that one down a little bit lower. So let's go ahead and do these. And if you have... Um, stem wire and you prefer to use it over this then you could definitely do that I missed the spot I'm gonna go back up down these are dahlias Floral tape takes practice, guys. It takes practice. Grab yourself a piece of your wire, a scrap piece, a small piece, or cut a small piece off, and just practice. If it's not sticking, you've either stretched it too much or not enough, okay? Because when it's not sticky at all until I stretch it, and when I stretch it, it releases that wax, and then it gets tacky, okay? You can do it. I promise you can do it. And that's why I wrap part of this stem so that that tack will help me against this tacky part and help me hold it on there where I want it. Okay? It helps to hold it there. And then when you put your next piece on, it's going to help you because it's already sticky and tacky. It's a lot easier to control, okay? Again, if you want to see how I'm holding, it's really hard for me to get my hand twisted around so you guys can see how I'm doing it.
Yeah, I think that I have fibro as well, but the carpal tunnel and the arthritis doesn't help either. It didn't tear where I wanted it to. And we have another Dahlia. Then you can work with your leaves and get them separated and done like you want. Thin them. Put bugs on them. <laughs> That's super fun. We're going to put those in our base. So you guys can see. We have our magnolias on one side and our dahlias on the other. And then our orchid can go back here and be tall and draped over. Or you can do just a vase of dahlias. Um, Christiana, I, um, have carpal tunnel in it and I have arthritis as well. And I opened up a microwave. I pushed my thumb in and to push the button on it when I, my dad had surgery and something in my palm popped and it felt like shot waves ran down my fingers and up my, to my elbow. And I can't make a good fist at this point. I have an appointment for the 13th. It's not broken. I had it x-rayed. It's not broken, but it's painful. Right? Isn't that pretty? It's getting there. And again, you can do, you could do just dahlias. You can trim your stems off, measure them. I wanted these to be taller because I'm going to probably put them in with the magnolias. But you can, you can shorten them down, do what you want, make them different heights to get your arrangement going. You can put your leaves at different heights. You don't have to put the leaves all the way up at the top like I did on these guys. You don't have to. You can put them further down the stem, if, especially if your stem is going to be taller. You'll want to move them down a little bit so that you have that filler in there. Okay? That filler... It's going to give you green filler if you go up at the top down for those that are going to be shorter or you're going to have flowers up under them, you might want some at the top. And if it's going to be a taller stem, you might, let me lay this down so you, if it's going to be a taller stem, you might want to move these leaves down a little bit to give that filler in there. So just judge. You can wait to put your leaves on and, and do your wrappings. Just do your flowers, get them ready. And then put them in your base, decide where you want, then cut off your heights once you have your heights, and then put your leaves on where you want them to go in there. Yeah, uh, it depends on the look. I like them both. I like them both equally. This is just, this was easier to work with. It's going to give you a fuller flower and a different look. And this is going to give you a crisper, sharper look, but it's going to be a little bit more difficult to work with. So it all depends on what you want, what look you want, what you want to go for. This one to me looks a little more realistic than this one does. But they're both very pretty. So, and it's not really a sharper cut, it's just the difference in material. Same here with the magnolias. Remember I said you're going to get that sharper, crisper um, look, and it's going to stand up better than the lighter felt because it's going to be floppy. Now, if you made this magnolia a little bit smaller, and we know magnolias are not small, but if you made it a little bit smaller, it might alleviate some of that uh, floppiness on the Joanne fabric. Okay. My cord got loose over there. There we go. 
So again, you're just going to do a test. See what that's what I'm doing here for you guys is doing a test to see which ones I like better. I like so far, I like the Cricut felt better for look on all the flowers that I've done so far. I like my Cricut look better. <laughs> but I also like the Joann's look. It gives it a little bit fuller look. Okay. And we'll see what happens with the orchid on Thursday, tomorrow. Are there just leaf stems in design space? Um, yes, the leaves are felt. And yeah, there are there are leaves. You can do you can use any leaf you want if you cut it to the right size and and out of felt, then you can do that. All right, so tomorrow, Orchid Day. But yeah, they don't they don't get any prettier, right? There's so so much you can do with them. Let me bend that up so you guys can see it. Because we can bend these and shape them any way we want in our arrangement. So got the got the flowers for everyone. That's for everybody. And then the supporters got a card. So that concludes today. And tomorrow, again, we're going to do the orchids. Um, the orchids, you may need, let me, I know I have them somewhere. Um, some of the small pom-poms. If you don't have the pom-poms, don't worry. You can't, I'm going to be probably using pom-poms, but you can use, um, if you're using the soft, soft felt, you can use scraps of that and, and ball it up. So, but if you have pom-poms, I may use both. I don't know yet. I have pom-poms somewhere. I put them somewhere over here. You're going to need those for your orchid or either some scraps of the soft felt. So make sure you have that if you're going to be following along. Yeah, you can do, um, Diana, you can use the file just um, right here. Cut yourself some extra greenery. That's all you need to do and just do some green stems and that way you'll have some filler. I would I would just these especially look good if, if you're doing dahlias um, or you want that more realistic look because of the the cut on them but you could also use the ones that were used in the magnolia and make uh, just stems. So all you're going to do is ungroup, ungroup and then duplicate the pieces that you want. Okay. And just cut yourself some extras for extra stems. And you don't have to have a flower on there. That would just be at the top of your stem. Okay. Let me just undo that. Because we want to go in here and I'm going to go ahead and save it. That one is going to be for the 10th. I think it was the 10th, the peony. There's two parts to it because it's individual and we're going to take the whole hour for it. We're not going to do anything on that day but that flower. Um, so the orchids. We're going to. Arrange, send that to the back. Oops. And this one, this one will be in the file. This is the one that we're cutting next. Okay. Let me duplicate 
that. Well, if it's going to let me double click it, it wants to play with me today. There we go. And let's put in the date so everybody is. And change that. Where's your orchid? Yeah, group. Save. So that's the one for tomorrow. I've unhidden it in the file. You're going to use that same file number. Um, this is going to get crowded. I will rename it Flower Week once we're done. Orchid is going to be 020223. And we are going to save. So. That file is now ready and set up for tomorrow. All you're going to do is hide these when you go to cut. And then when you send it to the mat, only that will go. Okay. Do you guys just want me to save it that way so you don't have to hide the others? It's up to you. I can bring it to the top and hide and Save it that way. You guys know the rest are hidden in there, so you can unhide them. That, that'll keep you from getting confused and know where we're at for tomorrow. All right, guys. You have a wonderful day. I will catch you tomorrow, and we will do orchids. Um, and that will be the only file that we're doing tomorrow night. Just the orchids. All right, it's all saved and ready. You guys want the link, just in case you don't have it, let me grab that. It's in, It's on my profile, if you guys are following my profile. And if you want the file, there it is. All right, happy crafting. Make some dahlias and post them in the group. Let's see. Make some magnolias, too. Let's see them. Happy crafting, everybody. Thank you for your support. I appreciate you all.